Hi, if you have problems photographing birds in flight, I've got the perfect solution for you. All you've got to do is practice photographing dragonflies and damselflies in flight, and then when you go back to photographing birds, it will seem a doddle. You'll wonder what all the fuss was about. It's the end of August, and it's my least favourite time of year to photograph birds. Birds are skulking a lot in August, you don't, they don't show themselves, they're molting, it's the end of the breeding season, it's very quiet, you don't hear much in the way of bird calls. So I've turned my attention to dragonflies. Now, when I was a teenager, I knew all my dragonflies and damselflies, butterflies, even the common flowers. But bird photography really took over and it's so time consuming, I really don't have time to look at anything else. But this month I have, I've put quite a few sessions into it and it's been very, very challenging. At the time I'm photographing them, I don't necessarily know what they are. I get them identified when I get home. But I started off with the larger ones, like the Emperor Dragonfly. First of all, it's quite big and therefore easier. Also, they do hover to a degree. So you'll get the, the Emperor Dragonfly flying up and down and round in circles very fast. You think it's impossible to photograph it. But eventually, if you sit here and watch it for 20 minutes or so, you realise just occasionally it does hover briefly less than a second but long enough to get a picture so long as you can get onto it all of the pictures in this film are taken with the 150 to 400 mil lens with its minimum focus of 1.3 meters it's a very versatile lens i've never been a great one for cropping pictures i want various image sizes i want them small in the frame medium size large in the frame i want a variety but I'm always reluctant to rely upon cropping pictures. Even when I had the Sony A1 with its huge files, I just couldn't bring myself to crop. So unless it's big enough in the frame, I don't bother taking pictures. And that makes it more difficult because when it's big in the frame, it's harder to follow. There's a lot of things in common with bird photography. First of all, I'm, if I'm doing a bird in flight, I want the sun coming over my shoulder, lighting the bird up and a, a low sun as well, ideally. But with dragonflies, they don't get flying first thing in the morning. You've got to wait till the day's warmed up a bit. Nevertheless, the sun's coming from that direction. But also, I really want the wind in the right direction too. If the wind's coming towards me like this, then the dragonfly is going to spend most of its time facing into the wind. When it comes this way with the wind behind it, it will be very, very fast. Then it will circle round, go to that end of the pool again. And if it's going to hover, it will hover with its back to me. So it's a bit awkward. You've got to have the wind and the sun in the right direction, exactly the same as with bird photography. Now an OM-1 camera does not have insect detection. It's got bird detection, mammals and, well, cats and dogs, I think they call it, but I call it mammals. And it's got aeroplane detection. I started off by turning detection off completely and that was hopeless. I wasn't getting any pictures at all. So then I tried aeroplane detection and then bird detection and a big dragonfly is it's halfway between the two. It looks a bit like an aeroplane, looks a bit like a bird. I can't distinguish any difference between the two. Whether I use airplane or bird detection, it's about the same. Probably not as good as bird detection on a bird, but it works. It, it is locking on that picture so long as that hoverfly lands or sorry, hovers long enough. So what I'm finding I'm having to do is just keep following this dragonfly. Whenever it goes at the right distance from me and on that side of the, this very small pool, I'm following it around or trying to. And it's almost impossible. You cannot keep it in the viewfinder. You're just hoping that at some point it does that little hover and then you've got time to find it, press the autofocus button, it locks onto it and you might get three or four pictures of it in that very brief time that it's hovering and they will hover from time to time. Just as with bird photography the background is very important sometimes it's just too messy when the insect goes too low so when the background is more distant it's for me a nicer looking picture slightly more diffused background. Another difference between photographing dragonflies and damselflies and birds is you need a high shutter speed just like you do with birds now, my starting point with bird photography in flight is 2,500th of a second. For a dragonfly, I think you need to go faster than that. I've been looking for around 4,000th of a second. And then you also need a lot more depth of field. Photographing a bird in flight, I'll have the aperture wide open. 
the Dragonfly have been closing it down a couple of stops. And bearing in mind with the Micro Four Third camera, you've already got two extra stops of depth of field because it's not a full trip camera. So now I'm closing it down two stops on top of that as well. So I've been using the ISO at 3200 instead of my normal 1600. So the whole time I'm here, I'm watching the dragonflies to see where they're flying because they will keep changing the positions they're going to. And three times in recent minutes, there's been a dragonfly fly across the open water here and hover. So I've moved over to this little channel now, which has got the advantage I'm slightly lower down. Sun's still behind me. The wind's building up. The wind's becoming a problem. I'm going to have to pack up soon. So once you get past just setting your camera up technically, the only skill, the only photographer's input here, the hard part, is finding these insects in the viewfinder. They're flying very quick and you've got to pick them up very, very quickly. And there's only two things I can give you as advice on that. And the first one is not that clever, but the second one is very important. So the first one is just like throwing and catching a ball. The more often you do it, the better you get at it. That's not very helpful. But the second thing is, I always find I have to be square on to the camera. So I'm sitting on this stool now, but whether I'm standing or whether I'm sitting, I have to be square on, feet side by side. If I find myself in this sort of position, I find it a lot more difficult to pick up either a bird or an insect in the viewfinder. Have to be square. And it's why I've mentioned before, I really struggle to do birds in flight from a car window because I'm sitting in the car seat and my camera's out this side here. I'm at an angle. I find it a lot more difficult. And it's not just the restriction of the window. It's because my body's twisted. My body has to be straight. So that's how I've been photographing the larger dragonflies. I would imagine some species hover more frequently than others. And if you're an expert on dragonflies, you'd know which were which. I don't at this point. When it comes to the smaller ones, I started making use of Pro Capture, and what a wonderful feature that is. So let's say you've got a common blue damselfly, very small, very fragile looking thing. They have favoured perches, just like birds. So if you see one land here and you watch, if it flies off and comes back and lands there again, it's worth getting up close to this perch and then just waiting. But with Pro Capture, it will sit on this perch and it will nearly always face into the wind, just like birds, the wind is very, very important. You wouldn't think there's any wind blowing today, it's very calm, but if you wet your finger, make your finger a bit colder, you can just about sense the wind is coming on this side. So the damselfly is actually gonna, is actually gonna be facing this way, but still we'll, we'll carry on, pretend he's facing that way. And with Pro Capture, I can then just focus on him, leave the Pro Capture running. When he launches into flight, I get a flight shot. Now, the autofocus is not fast enough for this. Um, I'm shooting 50 frames per second. It should be continuous focus, but you only get one or two frames out of that 50 per, sec per second. So it's not a lot. So really, you've got to have that damselfly launch into flight dead parallel to the camera, staying in the same plane of focus. If it comes off that way, you're going to miss it. If it comes off this way, you're going to miss it. But frequently enough, when it takes off, it will be in the same plane of focus. Now, if you haven't got Pro Capture, you can still get pictures like this because if you watch a damselfly, it will come off and in five seconds, it can circle around and land again. Or sometimes it might go off for five minutes and come back. But quite frequently, it's a very short time it's away, flies off, comes around, relands. So now you can just watch it with your eye, not looking through the viewfinder. And when you see it about here, coming into the picture to start the camera running and you can still get it so long as it stays on that plane of focus. I think we're asking a bit much for any autofocus camera to manage to focus on something coming into the picture like that when it's only there for one or two frames. Not likely to happen yet. So this is a sequence of a dragonfly coming in to land on a perch it's been using before. I'm using Pro Capture, but I didn't have to for this picture. It's only the last frame just before it touches the perch that's really sharp. But it's something that the insect kept repeating, so I had perhaps 20 attempts at doing this.
This is at a different location and I liked it because there was very little vegetation in the water. So when the inset launched, then I just got blue water behind it. And the same for these red-eyed damselflies. Lovely red eye on them. You can see here with all four wings showing that I haven't got them sharp throughout, even though I've closed the lens down far further than I normally would. So here's a common blue damselfly launching into flight or sometimes landing. I can't remember which now. I was using Pro Capture and it works equally well whether it's taking off or landing. Very common to see dragonflies coupled up when they're laying their eggs. It doesn't slow them down any and you have to get both of them in the same plane of focus, which is very difficult. Here, the one in the water is way out of focus and you've just got to wait until the, the male turns and so he's on that same plane of focus. And here is exactly the opposite. Thanks for watching.